Problem going live now. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Health and uh, Adult Services uh, Overview Scrutiny Committee, the last one of this uh, municipal year. Uh, before I move to the formal agenda, could I just bring to committee's attention that today we see the uh, retirement of uh, Dr. Warren Batiani, um, and I think uh, we would all wish to send Warren uh, our very uh, best wishes. Uh, Warren has been an outstanding servant uh, of the people of Bolton and District uh, in his uh, medical duties. And uh, we wish Warren uh, every um, happiness in his retirement and many long years of happy retirement. We, we would also like to welcome Dr. Narubin uh, Ratnaraja, uh, who takes over uh, from uh, Warren and he takes up his position tomorrow. So we would like to wish him uh, all the best of luck and a very warm welcome uh, to Bolton and District um, and uh, wish him success in his position. Thank you. Um, item one on the agenda, declarations of interest. Are there any? No declarations, thank you. Urgent business, Mrs Ridge. There is none, Chair. Thank you. Any apologies for absence, please? I've got apologies from Councillor Mistry and Councillor Peel is deputising. Thank you. Um, the item four is, are the minutes of the previous committee, uh, Health and Overview Scrutiny Committee. Uh, you've had a copy of the minutes. Uh, will someone please move those minutes? I will move them minutes, Chair. Councillor Thank Patterson. you. Is that seconded? Seconded, Chair. Uh, that we approve them. All in favour of approving, say aye, please. Aye. Aye, aye. thank you. Thank you. Aye. The have it. Anything uh, arising from those minutes at all? No, thank you. Uh, item five is the committee work programme, and you have a copy. Any comments? Okay, thank you. Item number six is the COVID-19 update and we have a, a presentation uh, and I think it's uh, Dr. Helen Lowy who will uh, present this. Uh, Helen, please. Thank you. Um, I'll start the presentation and then hand over to um, colleagues as we go through, if that's OK. So um, the update from the public health perspective is just going to focus on the data intelligence and also the testing programme. And then I'll hand over to um, Fiona, if that's OK. So next slide, please. Okay, so just given our rates and where we're at um, for Bolton, um, we have seen a slight increase in the last um, seven days of our of our rates. <clears throat> um, we're now at 108.5 per hundred thousand. Um, so obviously we're keeping a close eye on that. Where we are seeing um, a reduction is in the age 60 um, and above. And again, they've the the rates there have come down. Um, over the over the last seven seven days, and I'm really pleased to say that in the very older age populations, um, we haven't had um, any cases recorded um, in the last couple of days. So, which is very um, promising. Obviously, the working age population is the the um, still remains that the highest, and we are starting to see um, some numbers come through um, on the um, 11 to um, 18 year olds as they undertake the lateral flow device testing. Um, home testing kits um, through the education setting approach. So unfortunately though we've we've had um, 765 deaths to, to date since the start of the pandemic just over 12 months ago. Um, I'd also like to say that our positivity on our testing is is reducing so it still remains at the moment under 5% which is um, so we're green at the moment on that which is again really good. Um, 
Although, again, just to highlight that our estimated R value for the Northwest um, is 0.7 to 1.0. Um, so it has just increased slightly um, there. So again, we're keeping a very close eye on that, that number value as well. Next slide, please. Really what this graph is just showing you is a look back over the last 12 months of um, of the pandemic. Um, so we can see in the, the yellow um, yellow bars there are the pillar one testing. So the testing that's done for um, patients who were in hospital or health and social care staff um, for clinical need. Um, or, and then pillar two is our community testing through the PCR route. So again, you can see how the, the um, rates have, have increased and, and decreased over the, the 12 month period. And as you can see right at the right hand side of that slide, how we're still are still coming down and um, still got a long way to go so again I still keep my public health messages of please do even now as we're starting to open up um, and following the roadmap and um, please do keep the two meters um, you know washing hands keeping face coverings and um, even outdoors if if you're outdoors and um, as well as as keeping the airspace next slide please for our testing model um, and this is really aimed around our um, our lateral flow testing, but we continue to provide COVID-19 testing throughout 2020, 2021. Um, and that's to both to support our national roadmap and also our local communities. So we have five symptomatic test sites in Bolton um, and they've been establishment for, for a number of months now. Um, and that's the PCR testing. So if you're symptomatic, you'll go through the national portal and, have, um, and have receive your um, PCR testing through the, the five sites that we've got. We're also delivered, we've started to deliver on the asymptomatic lateral flow device, our community testing program at three asymptomatic test sites, um, and that's taken place um, since January of this year. It is expected as we go forward that um, home testing will become the predominant route for residents um, asymptomatic testing. Um, and because of that, we have already started to expand um, our asymptomatic testing via the community collect offer. So essentially, this is where we offer home tests for collection um, across a range of our, our key sites. And we're also going to expand that out to pharmacies and, and business collector model. Um, for home testing. And again, for example, if, if you've got any um, family members, students, um, children, young people in your house, whether it's um, a, a primary school, secondary school or, or college, we are asking and advising um, their households to, to also undertake the, the home testing twice a week. And again, you can collect the um, test through the community collect um, offer that we have. We've also been doing a number of um, a significant amounts of community engagement around testing, linked into also the vaccination programme as well as self-selation um, to ensure that it's been place based and considered across all of our neighbourhoods of the um, integrated care partnership as well. And again, flexing in each of those areas because it Again, um, responding to our, our neighbourhood um, requirements and acknowledging that one size doesn't fit all. Next slide, please. OK, thank you. Um, so we are transitioning to a, to a new model just to respond, as I say, around the, the more of the home testing um, response that's required for, for COVID-19. Um, we'll continue with our assisted asymptomatic testing at a single site to support businesses and their workforces. So again, that's what our uh, number of our sites do at the moment. Um, but we'll also be offering a more flexible, responsive roving offer for testing and distribution. Again, taking that community engagement approach and focused in our neighbourhoods. We also have provision for surge and outbreak testing um, and again to support the VOX surveillance and the VOX stands for variant of, con variant of concern so that if we ever need to do any surge testing we've got provision in place to, to ensure that happens. Um, we we will be standing down the assisted testing at Castle Hill and moving to a collection only um, so that again it's the more mo the model of the home testing, which is conv more convenient for for um, our workforce, but also our residents. And and again, shifting from the the Dean Road as as well. The sy symptomatic testing. So if you're symptomatic, will continue to be provided by the Department of Health and Social Care um, at our two sites. 
um, and there's a potential for a third relocated site um, as, as more lane is developed. And the remodelling of the core programme team um, to support that testing operations, external relations and delivery of the COVID-19 outbreak management plan and really respond as we move forward throughout the um, roadmap and, and what's required for both the, the contact testing and contact tracing. Next slide, please. I'm not going to go into detail of this. You'll you'll have it in your slide deck when you, you do get it. It's just that all it is is a geograph um, geographical <laughs> a, a diagram of of what I've just explained about the assisted asymptomatic testing. So and again, asymptomatic is for people who do not have symptoms. Where we've currently got it, where we're moving to, and ensuring that it is all aligned with our outbreak management um, plans and our, our programmes of, of work, as well as looking at the, the home test asymptomatic testing again for, for people who want the lateral flow device um, from the home environment. So we've already started um, all of this in place as a, as, as um, the last few months um, of this year. So I think the next slide, please, is where I'm then going to hand over to Fiona. Um, so thank you very much. So that's it from me and I'll hand over to Fiona. Thank you. Um, just before you do that, uh, Helen, I'm going to ask uh, colleagues if they have any questions at this stage on your uh, on your first part of the presentation. Just before I bring them in, could I ask a question, please? Um, one of the concerning issues at the moment is the reported outbreak of the South African variant uh, at the Wingates Industrial Estate uh, at West Halton. And I'd, I wonder if you'd like to say something about the borough's response to this uh, incident and, uh, and how it's been dealt with, please. Sorry, press the wrong button. Um, yes, it's um, we've got we've been notified through the um, Public Health England surveillance system uh, where they do do the, the the genome sequencing that we had um, a case of a, of a South African variant. So we haven't got an outbreak. Um, we were notified of of um, of, a, of um, as I say, of um, a case that had been um, confirmed with having the South African variant with no known travel history either um, and with that we've been working with um, Public Health England. All things were put in place and the, we believe that the risk of transmission to, to the rest of our communi community is very low. What we are doing as a precautionary me measure and to ensure that we do understand if there's, there is any spread, but as I say, it is more of a precautionary me measure, is we've put in additional testing at the Wingate's um, industrial estate and um, we've been working with businesses there um, so that they um, have been providing home test kits to to their um, all their employees and we've also set up a mobile unit testing unit there as well so that we can um, ask people to um, come for their testing it's for a two-week period of time so that's why we call it a surge testing because it's surging the testing over a defined period of time it's over two weeks it is a seven day a week service all over the Easter weekend um, it will be there and as I say the businesses have been brilliant at, and cooperating um, with us so as I say it is a precautionary approach that we're taking um, after we've been notified of um, a single case thank you Th thanks uh thanks very much for that Helen uh, I have a question uh, from uh, Sue Howarth. Councillor Howarth, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Chair. Um, I want to ask actually about the months ahead. Um, <laughs> it was government delay um, of lockdown restrictions way back in spring 2020. That saw the number of those infected with coronavirus rise in this country, did it not, to 1.3 million. In nine days, uh, according to one of the important coronavirus studies, uh, we're told, after that lockdown, infection rates fell, but the government uh, failed to do what was needed to suppress the virus rising into the next months. 
Staff in Bolton have worked tremendously hard to overcome the coronavirus pandemic here. Then towards last Christmas, Christmas the government dithered and a quarter of all deaths uh, from coronavirus in Bolton have taken place in 2021. Scientists now tell us, you've just been talking about this, that the government's poor control of coronavirus has increased the force of the infection and allowed uh, more mutations to happen in, in the country. Um, and um, that's concern for Bolton. Senior doctors are predicting a third coronavirus wave in England uh, in the summer here. So what preparations are being made now in Bolton? And how do you prepare? How do you prepare us under a government that makes decisions late in the day? Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not on live yet. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Um, what what we've got for, for 2021 is we've got a planned roadmap and each of the roadmaps have um, a step process within them. And my understanding is that the um, we don't move on to the next step until we have considered all of the data, not just the rates, but the impact on primary care, secondary care um, as, as, as well. So that as we are moving forward, that we um, do see we, each of the steps can, can be mo um, opened up. So public health does welcome the cautious approach and the stepped approach. And there is a five week gap in between each of the steps, a minimum five week gap in between each of the steps. And the reason for that is to see if there's any impact on rates impacting on our NHS and social care provision. So that we can assess whether um, again it should step step two, three or four continue as it is planned or should be should be delayed um, depending on, on you know whether it's step two three or four depending on the data and the intelligence. Alongside this is the road map is is also the um, the the vaccination rates which I know Sue, Sue Long is going to speak about our vaccination rates so we do know that we're getting more and more people in our communities vaccinated who will then um, obviously develop the immunity to the uh, virus so that again alongside as we're opening up then the, the intention is obviously to keep our morbidity and our, our mortality um, as low as, as possible. So we, as I say, public health, um, both nationally and locally, welcome the cautious, cautious approach and the stepped approach so that we have got the, the, the plans in place. And again, from an assurance point of view, we have um, a health protection board that I chair that has been meeting weekly. Um, every Friday afternoon, we've had excellent attendance by all our stakeholders, multi-agency group, um, where all the planning takes place, um, again, to ensure that we've got plans around um, enforcement, compliance, um, as well as um, vaccinations, testing, tracing, contact tracing and isolation support. So the whole, whole breadth of the outbreak control plan that we have, uh, which is published on the website, um, is, is um is adhered to and we put all the plans in place and, and knowing what the steps are is actually really helpful to help us with our planning as, as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, uh, Helen. Uh, I have two further speakers. Uh, first, I have Councillor Mark Cunningham and then Councillor Peel. Councillor Cunningham, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's still, it, obviously, it's the last meeting we have of, the, of this municipal year for the uh, scrutiny committee. Um, there is a tendency, and I'm hoping that we won't continue in this vein through the rest of the meeting, uh, trying to have a go at government. I'd just like to say that, oh, I would like to ask whether or not perhaps um, uh, Dr. Helen Lowy uh, would be in agreement with saying that regardless of many, many, uh, a very sharp learning curve where things will have gone wrong, things will have been done wrong, you've got to learn. Are we going in the right direction in the terms that, in the terms that we've developed vaccines for this virus, 
We've built manufacturing plants for this virus. We've got the best, as far as I'm aware, and I wonder whether she would agree, vaccination program probably in the, in the Western world, not the world altogether. Um, are we right to have you know the hope that we are going in the right direction with this and that we are leading the way forgetting all the political side of it and that we've got you know a proper way out of it are you happy that we've got the right roadmap the right way out of this uh, to, to take us out of, onto a, a brighter future hopefully at the end of the year so as i as i said before um I think for me, it's about making sure that we take a precautionary approach. Um, I haven't strayed at all from my public health messages and that we need to continue with the non-pharmaceutical interventions, the public health interventions um, <clears throat> throughout the next few months um, and even longer. It is actually good practice anyway for, you know, hand hygiene and, and so on. Um, and we know fresh air is, 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 is good for us. Um, but obviously the face coverings as well and also keeping our two meters to, to at least two meter um, distance. So I think um, the, as things open up, we will expect to get an increase in rates because obviously we know, again, taking it from the virus point of view, that um, the more contacts people have, the more the virus can, can transmit. Um, so the rates will will increase and obviously once it gets hold um, into the community, it can increase. It does increase, should I say, at an exponential rate. So for, for me, it's about making sure that until all of our population is vaccinated and um, that we keep with those um, precautionary and cautious measures. Um, and I say that as a as a public health to say again, um, keeping in, in mind um, that we want to, to move forward through this um, pandemic. Hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you. Councillor Peel, please. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, and thanks for the presentation again. I'm one of those um, uh, members who are quite privileged to be attending weekly uh, recovery group meetings for the last 12 months. It's um, it, it's, uh, it's it's really been a fascinating journey for us all. And um, you know, I think uh, I think we run out of um, adjectives to use to dis to describe our wonderful staff. Um, the, Helen's normally normally blushing during these groups and. And Dr. Wall and others because of the immense gratitude that we have for them. In those recovery groups, Chair, there is an open and honest and frank exchange of views on what uh, members and officers feel has gone wrong. Um, not much with local in implementation, I've got to say, but with national policy on this. Um, and there's never been an issue of members from whatever side including Conservative members saying, yeah, the government got this wrong and they should have done it differently. So what's the difference between that group and this meeting now? Well, this meeting now is in the public domain. So when the politically appointed executive member, Councillor Baines for Health and, and, Wealth and Wellbeing, says this is not a political meeting but a scrutiny meeting, criticising Councillor Howarth for giving quite an accurate assessment of the journey we've been on, the last 12 months I find outrageous. We as elected members are here to scrutinise policy, whether that is local or nationally and how that helps or affects the people of Bolton. We will not be neutered from criticising the government where we feel the need to be criticised. In the same way we won't be neutered from praising the government where we feel the need to be praised. If we're going to have an open and honest debate about this in the public arena. We should not um, be kowtowed to by, by an executive member who wants to stop us from criticising the government. That is wrong. That is not something that the public would appreciate. And I'm aware that uh, yourself, you've got a, an outstanding request for a full inquiry into um, uh, the effects of COVID in Bolton. Uh, we understand officer capacity uh, has led to that not being able to to take place, but it will take place. And when that inquiry takes place in Bolton, as well as the national inquiry, there will be things that will come out. You know, the government clearly ignored medical 
and scientific advice when it made decisions over the last 12 months. The government has still got to answer for the policy of discharging patients from care homes, sorry, from hospitals into care homes who were knowingly COVID positive. They still have to answer for that. They are still facing legal challenge in courts over that political decision. Because I'm sorry to any member who gets offended. Every decision that the government makes on anything, including COVID, is a political decision. Please don't try and pretend it's not a political decision. It is. And I would expect Labour members, Conservative members and any other group here to praise where we feel we should praise and to criticise where we feel there are grounds for criticism. Finally, Chair, um, I wasn't going to speak other than seeing that comment in chat. It goes without saying that our officers locally, as well as public servants nationally, have done a tremendous job, a, a, an unbelievable job that, that the country can never thank them enough for. They're not the ones in the spotlight. The people in the spotlight are the people who make the political decisions that public servants are then expected to follow. So thank you, Chair. To Councillor Cunningham, no, I don't think the entire meeting will be political. It doesn't need to be, but it does need to be. We do need to have the ability to criticise where we feel we should. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Peel. Uh, I have two more speakers. I have Councillor Baines, the exec member, and Councillor Morgan. Uh, Councillor Baines, please. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, well, yes, I don't wish to politicise this, uh, obviously, at all. It, it's a very important topic we're actually considering. I'm sure everyone on this meeting will agree. However, uh, and I expected Councillor Peel to, uh, to come back with that. However, as exec member for the portfolio of health and wellbeing, my first and foremost priority, as with everyone on this meeting tonight, is the health and welfare and wellbeing of our Bolton residents. Um, and I don't think at some point, yes, Councillor Peel is right, the government will be uh, looked at in terms of the decisions they've made. But this is a, a scrutiny for Bolton Council tonight, and I don't think it's doing us any good taking it back to national politics at this level. That's all I, I want to say on this, because the focus should be on what, what it is about tonight. It's a scrutiny meeting for, for our area, for our borough. So thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morgan, please. Thanks, Chair. I um, don't want to drag this on because I think um, as a council, whole council, we've really worked together well. And as Nick indicated, the, re the recovery meetings that we have every week um, have been frank, open and have really pushed the agenda forward uh, unpolitically for the whole borough. But I think it is inappropriate to try and put in um, by anybody, that's that's whether it's the administration, the controlling the mission, or to put all the opposition to put officers on the spot politically, and they should be just answering um, as they see professionally, as Dr. Helen Lowey has done. So yeah, we have absolutely um, worked together well, and we shouldn't be politicising the issue. And there will be a frank and open discussion and review of the government's performance, and I would assume our performance as an executive as well, which should be welcome because. Any lessons learned going forward are uh, obviously best, best, best for the for the town. So uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, keep up good work, everybody. Thanks, Andy. Um, Councillor Sherrington, please. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um... Thanks, Chair. Um, the thing is that we sit on a scrutiny committee and the idea is to actually scrutinise the executive members. It's not, we are not criticising the officers. The officers have fetched information forward so that we can actually find out things that can help us. 
Now, the executive members, for some reason or other now, have decided that they will question the committee, the, the actual scrutiny committee, which they're not there to actually question what we're saying. They're there to answer questions. And that is the only reason that they are there. They are the ones who are actually there to answer, not to actually criticise what we are saying. So I think they need to actually have a look at what they should be doing as executive members. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Sherrington. Before I move on to the second part of the presentation, could I just ask Dr. Lloyd to note the uh, question from Councillor uh, Ishmael Ibrahim, who is having trouble again with his system uh, logging into the meeting. Perhaps if you if you could have a look at that question, uh, Helen, and contact uh, Councillor uh, Ibrahim directly, that, that would be much appreciated. Can we move on to the second part of tonight's presentation? Uh, and this is the system update by Fiona Noden. Fiona, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Donahue. I will start, hand over to Rachel Tanner as well. So uh, next slide, please. So just to remind everybody, we have had three waves in Bolton and these are our hospital inpatients during that period of time. So our first wave was the first, uh, it was the 12th of April where we had 163 inpatients. Our second wave was the 10th of November where we had 166 inpatients. And wave three was the 22nd of January where we had 147 inpatients on our premises. And as you can see then demonstrated by the graph that we've had a significant reduction over the last few weeks, which is really pleasing to note that the activities that have been going on throughout Bolton have made sure that the number of people who've required inpatient stays have reduced. So thank you, next slide. So the current situation is that we currently have um, no patients that have been diagnosed within critical care in the last 14 days. However, we still have a patient who has been diagnosed in the last 24 hours. In total, we've got 21 patients on our premises, and as you can tell by the previous slide, it's a significant reduction that we've had over the last few months. Unfortunately, we have continued to have patient deaths, and we've had 66 patient deaths during the months of March, which has made our total deaths since the start of the pandemic, and our first death in Bolton was the 23rd of March last year. So we've had 682 patient deaths in, a, in the hospital since the 23rd of March last year. Uh, thank you, next slide. So our main areas of concern and our main areas of challenge is what I'm going to come on to. So our COVID activity, it's really pleasing to note that it's been the lowest uh, in hospital activity in, since August last year. However, our key workforce and physical challenges remain the same. So that's our workforce are tired and our workforce are, are still, are still, still have COVID and our workforce still have normal sickness and the physical challenges of our estate, which mean that we have to create different kinds of COVID pathways and non-COVID pathways to keep our patients safe. What's been really pleasing is that we've opened our same day emergency care service uh, that opened in, in February and we've seen that um, patients are now diverted into the same day emergency care to allow for um, activity to um, be for those patients to be seen elsewhere and be to be diagnosed and treated elsewhere. However, we have seen that our attendances into urgent care have come very close to pre-COVID levels and at present are um, exceeding pre-COVID levels. So there are many patients who are now accessing emergency services that weren't previously. And that becomes a, a challenge for us to maintain that activity. Uh, next slide, please. So after wave three um, and our restoration of services, we've got four main areas that we are concentrating on. The first one is making sure that our staff, staff are supported. So we have wellbeing services that have been put in place to support all our staff 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
and we it's really pleasing to note that we have the best staff survey in Greater Manchester, which means that the activities that we put in place to support our staff have, have been reflected very positively, which means that our patients have got really good staff looking after them. We've continued to provide um, a successful vaccination pro programme to um, staff across both Bolton FT and social services and health and wellbeing in Bolton. Um, so we've uh, almost on the uh, second week 